Hi guys, this is Mark Davis at Optimum Technology Transfer. Welcome to you all. In this, my latest YouTube video, we're going to take a look at creating, uh, incorporating some further um, Excel functionality, some further interactivity into this whole dynamic charting idea. So if you have seen my previous dynamic charts video, you'll know exactly how to do this kind of thing. So. I've added a brand new year uh, with a brand new piece of data, for example, the profits have gone up slightly, and of course the chart changes automatically because of the functionality that I've incorporated in the, into this particular workbook. So I've used dynamic named ranges, and I've used those dynamic named ranges uh, for the source of data for this particular chart itself. Now, as I say, I want to take it further, incorporate some further interactivity. Now. What about this idea? Uh, somebody said well, uh, to me uh, recently, well, what about if I only want to see um, so much historical data? So I had to have a good think about this. Uh, and, well, this is what uh, I came up with. I'll just move my chart away. So the user would like to go back this far. So there's a 3 in there, that which means just the previous three years. If there was a four, of course, this far. And if there was a five, and so on. I'm sure you get the idea. Now, that is not the case, of course, at the moment. I can put whatever in here, and it has no influence, as it were, on the chart itself. But I'd like it to have a dramatic, dynamic influence upon the chart. Yeah. So, yes, do show me the final bit of data that I've got, and only go back so far. So how do you do that? Well, it's a variation on this offset. Let me just zoom into it and scroll. It's a variation on this particular formula that I've got in here that we created previously. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. So let me just go home. I'll go back to 100% view for the moment. Control and F3. Let's have a look. I've got profit underscore one and profit under, uh, year underscore one. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create here using my name box. I'll create year underscore two, and then I'll create profit underscore two. Okay. Then I'll control and F3 and do a little bit of a cheat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that, copy that down into here. I'll be modifying it shortly. Same with this year one. Yep, I will tab down to copy that into here. Tickle check, so next I will tell me off and then click close. Yeah, for example. I'll then Alt and F1 to create the chart itself. I'll quickly, 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 quickly modify it this particular one here. Yeah, so that I don't want the year. Remember all this stuff from the previous video I want these and I click OK yeah for example and I click OK and I check things out all fine all working good mmm bit of a gap over here for example we need to deal with it, of course don't we so what I will do is go back in select data let's edit this and make sure that here of course what I should be doing is using profit underscore two and then okay and here of course what I should be doing is using year underscore two although I've capitalized it's kind of neither here nor there and click OK click OK and there we go and let me just check delete looking good for both charts still doesn't incorporate this other interactivity but that's what I'm going to do next so how do we do it well I'll modify I'll edit year underscore two and profit underscore two to illustrate this idea. So let me just go back to my name manager, click profit two. What I'm going to do is bear with me for a moment. Just made a little bit of a modification to that particular formula. I'll copy and paste it into a cell towards the end of the video guys. You can have a really really good look at it. So we know the offset function. It takes three arguments at least by default required uh, is a reference in the rows and columns. The number of rows and numbers of columns followed by the cell reference. So the cell reference in this particular case is that argument at the beginning there which is B1. Yeah, For example yeah, for the profit, or profit underscore two. The number of rows I want to go down is, well, count the number of cells in column B that are occupied, but I'm going to subtract from it this variable cell, go back this far. 
I'm going to comma separate yeah in this particular case and I'm going to say right well how many columns do I want to go across well I don't so I'll just put pop a zero in there and comma what's the height going to be of the range that you'd like to use in the dynamic chart with this extra interactivity well it's going to be this D2 this go back this far and then a comma now I don't have to do this but I will for my column uh, or my rather my width argument put a 1 in there, it'll be 1 by default anyway if we leave it out close off my brackets and press my tick and do exactly the same or something very very similar indeed of course with year underscore 2 so a little bit of a modification there so there is my reference there is the number of rows let me just get rid of that there's the number of rows minus this variable comma 0 because I don't actually want to go across kind of in a columnar direction yeah and then comma what's the height of my range going to be this variable yeah comma 1 again as I say we don't have to do that but uh, it'll, it'll be 1 by default but I'll do it anyway close off my brackets tick or check it and click close now let's have a look at this looks like we've gone down one row kind of too far let's have a look make a change here let's have, I'll change it to four now that seems all okay six of course it's too far because I haven't got that many years as yet anyway yeah so let's put in some more data yeah so what you might decide to do, that should be a 15, what you might decide to do as well for example in here is to say right okay you limit it in some way shape or form potentially put a little bit of extra interactivity but that's the idea so that's what we've got if we compare and contrast let me move that out of the way for the moment so this is the old one this is from the previous video this is what we did in my previous video it is dynamic there's no question about that at all looks good you know I can add or remove for example in this particular case that's a problem with it down there we'll discuss that shortly if I control Z yeah I can undo that if I control Z I can undo again so that that's interactive there's no question about that at all as is well I've got further interactivity here let me just bring it back up so what have I got in this particular one if I go back just five years click and select it yeah I've gone back I'm going back just five years let's go back just three years click and select the chart you can see very very clearly indeed yeah so an extra bit of interactivity now fairly complex but you know makes it so much more interesting of course doesn't it let me save the latest changes that I've made and what I'd like to do definitely as I did previously for you guys let's have a look at let me just go to my name manager I'm going to grab year two just tab down and copy it let me close that down for a moment and paste in put an apostrophe in the front there paste in the formula that I've just created and I'm going to zoom in scroll across a little bit maybe that's a bit too far let's have a look at that yes that's better so what I'd like you to do check it out yeah, I'm going to leave you with the latest offset formula. Again, it is offset, it's count A, uh, but it's also in this particular case, this time using a little bit of extra interactivity, which is to say, I think you'll agree, rather cool. So that's it from me, Mark Davis. Um, my latest dynamic charts uh, video do come back uh, here to YouTube search optimum technology transfer to check out various other videos that I've created but as I say that's it from me Mark take care and bye bye